Hello, my name is Corey Ann Thornick. I'm a student here at UTRGB, and I'm here to present my poster on what we know about the use of gestures in children with autism spectrum disorder. So we know that American Psychiatric Association defined autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, as a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by deficits in social interaction and communication and restricted and or repetitive behaviors. We know that the prevalence rate of ASD is one in 44 individuals. The median age of ASD diagnosis range from 36 to 63 months. ASD was 4.2 times more prevalent in males and Hispanic children are less likely to di be diagnosed than white children. Gesture use related to autism spectrum disorder, we see that both the type and frequency of gestures used by children with ASD have indeed been found to be significantly different than other populations. Understanding gesture use in children with ASD can allow for early identification of ASD, which is known to be associated with better outcomes. The purpose of this research was to compile all research related to gesture use in autism in order to create a systematic review that would examine frequency and type of gesture use in children with ASD compared to other populations. I wanted to use this research to be able to allow for um, earlier identification of ASD. The methodology includes primary and secondary search terms. The primary search terms were terms related to autism and the secondary search terms were terms related to gestures. The electronic databases that were used were PubMed, Web of Science, Academic Search Premier, PsychInfo, and ERIC. Using this methodology, we found 49,798 abstracts met um, those search terms in those databases. And we reviewed each of the abstracts for um, to see if they met the inclusion criteria. The inclusion criteria included peer-reviewed studies with experimental, quasi-experimental, case study, or single subject design, having a participant age range of six months to six years of age, a comparison group, one or more dependent variables associated with gestures, or gestures measured in isolation or in conjunction with vocalization, so social smile, and or eye contact. Once we reviewed all of those abstracts, we found that only 32 articles met the inclusion criteria and were then double coded with an inter-writer reliability of 97%. Of these articles, there were 15 articles that examined gesture type and nine of those measured exclusively gesture type while six measured both type and frequency. The most frequently used comparison group of these articles were typically developing. We'd like to see in the future of comparison groups that ranged in you know, intellectual disability, de language delays, developmental delays, et cetera. The most studied age range was found to be four to five years of age and the least studied age range was zero to one. We know that gestures emerge before the age of one and that it would be great if more research was there to study that age range in order to lower the diagnosis of ASD. A total of 38 gesture terms, 30 of which were different. Now this was very difficult when looking at all of the um, results in order to figure out, okay, this gesture term is this definition, but this gesture term says this definition. And there was just a lot of, you know, everything, nothing was just straightforward. So it was very difficult and it would be great in order to just have more clear research to have everyone on the same page as to what the definition is for what gesture term and just be able to really hone in on that. Um, of the 15 articles included, 14 found significant differences. So this did result in that children with ASD indeed use different types of gestures when compared to other populations. And younger children are least frequently studied, which has implications for earlier, earlier identification. And the diversity of gesture terminology and definition in the literature makes it very difficult to compare findings across the studies. So as far as gesture frequency, of the 32 articles, 23 examined frequency, with 17 exclusively measured frequency and six measuring both type and frequency. Again, the most frequently used comparison group was typically developing, 
and the most studied age range was 4 to 5 years, with the least studied age range being 0 to 1. A total of 80 gesture terms, of which 62 were different. So again, there is a great variety in which gesture terms were used and what their definitions were. And there were mixed results depending on the comparison group and type of gesture examined. So ASD did indeed, we did find that um, there were different frequencies of gesture, but it was dependent upon the gesture type examined and the comparison population. So if it was compared to Down syndrome, if it was compared to language delay, they did indeed have um, different uh, gesture type. Um, so younger children are least frequently studied, which has implication for earlier identification, just like the gesture type did as well. And diversity of gesture terminology and definition in the literature makes it difficult to compare findings across the studies. So it's very similar um, results in both gesture type and frequency and just that more research is needed and a better consensus over what terms should be used or um, how they're defined. And more research is needed in younger populations basically so that we can really truly lower the age of diagnosis of ASD. And thank you, that's my poster presentation. I hope you all have a great day and enjoy the rest of the symposium.